greetings to everyone involved in the Christian Revival Network of Pakistan. My name is Sean Hickey. I am based in Melbourne, Australia. And today it is a pleasure and a blessing to be able to share the Word of God with you. And today I want to talk to you about the love of God. Because God loves you. And God loves all people of the world. And in such dark times when there is so much trouble, the world needs to know there is and always will be a God who loves them. Now I want to share a little bit about my journey, about my testimony, about coming to know this God who loves us. Because it's, sometimes it's a process we need to go to where we lower our walls and we start to accept in our heart that we are cared for and that we can find peace and blessing in Almighty God, Jesus Christ. You see, I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. And me and my family at times, we would, we, you know, we were in a volatile environment. At times we would argue each other and I can, I can laugh about it now. But looking back, it was quite sad because many times we would not talk to, people, um, to each other for weeks on end because we didn't have the capacity to love like God loves. We didn't have the capacity to forgive one another and to move on with the issues that we had. But we would hold on with resentment and bitterness in our heart towards one another until the other person would cave and this is not how we should be living we should be living in peace and we should be living in um in love with one another that we can enjoy all that life has for us and all that god has done for us that we can enjoy the blessing of the kingdom of god you know as a young at a young age i suffered terrible anxiety and terrible fear you know, it was like there was a love lacking in my life. And at a young age, to cover these fears and mask my insecurities, I started drinking alcohol and taking drugs. And in a very short period of time, I became an alcoholic, addicted to drugs. You know, again, that volatile environment I was living into just got worse and worse. And I got in trouble with the police. I became a very angry man. I got in fights, I would break the law, I would steal things, and I lived according to my own way. I lived according to the hardness of my heart. And, you know, when you're living in such a dark environment, in such a dark place, things can only get worse. And through, it was very, very sad times for us because, you know, I lost some very dear friends to suicide and, and, and to prison. And I started to suffer just such deep depression of this darkness that I would feel and this oppressiveness that would be upon my life. I, I, I became tormented by demons. I couldn't sleep at night. You know, I was living in such sin and in such darkness, such a moral sin and a lifestyle of, of, of brokenness that demons had come into my life. They were, they were tormenting my mind. And as I said, I couldn't sleep at night because when it got dark and the, Everyone else around the place is asleep. These demons would start tormenting my mind, leaving me in great, leaving me in greater fear and worry. You know, I had lost all hope, lost in demonic darkness with no way of escape. And then one day I met a young Christian girl and she invited me to go to church. So I say I went along. It was the Salvation Army. And I started to learn and to hear that there was a God that, well, that loved us, that cared for us, but it never registered in my heart. I didn't quite get the understanding. You know, some things are only spiritually understood and learned. And here I was, a person of such worldliness, of, of fleshiness, of hardness, of darkness. And I started to, I fought against God with all I had. You see, I started to learn there was a God, but I thought because of the darkness and the sin that I was in, that this God would deal with me harshly, that he would punish me and that he would expose me for everything that I had done wrong in my life and make an example of my life to others. But I was so wrong. You see, in the darkest time of my life, when I was at my absolute worst, and I had lost everything that I had. I called out to God and I asked him for help. I asked him to come and help my life, to come and help my family's life and to use me 
for his purposes. And I tell you now, God heard me from heaven and he came to me and he instantly delivered me of the darkness that I was in. He came and he forgave me of all my sin. He had instantly delivered me of drug and alcohol addiction. He healed my depression. He completely took away the darkness I was in and he brought light into my life. You see, we serve an incredible mighty God and he destroyed the powers of darkness on my life. No longer from that time of surrendering my life to Jesus Christ have I had to had the same torment in my head of demons torments me. I found peace in Christ. And I want to read to you the scripture. It's from Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It says, He, meaning Jesus Christ, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. You see, God has done it all for us. You see, the world is trapped in darkness. It's trapped in bondage to the devil. Yet God, through Jesus Christ, his son, broke the power of darkness over your life. And he took you from this place of darkness and he transferred you over. He took you from darkness and has now brought you into a new kingdom. You are no longer attached or surrendered or in bondage to the world to the darkness that's in the world, or to the oppression of the devil. You have now come to a place of love, a kingdom of love, and a God of love. You know, the healing that started to take place in my life when I gave my heart to Christ is, well, like I cried so many tears. I was overwhelmed with emotion, and the tears would just keep flooding out of me. You know, it was a hard time for my family, my Parents' marriage was, was over and, you know, there were a lot of people in, 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 in distress, in absolute chaos. But I felt a presence in my life that I'd never felt before. You know, and I started to, because I didn't know much about Christianity, and I thought, well, Christians pray. So I thought I'd, I'd give prayer a go. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to pray. And I just got before God and I said hello to God and it amazed me because God was there. There was someone there. I had spent years in darkness and loneliness, yet now the lights were on. Someone was there to talk to. And this overwhelming feeling came, came over me and I started to confess my sins to Jesus. No one told me. It was just the feeling that I had. And as I started to speak out my sins, started to confess my sins to Jesus, he replied with, I forgive you. And I thought, that is so different to anything I'd heard before. And I started to share more sin that I'd lived in. And he said, I forgive you. And I, I, I was troubled. And I said, yeah, but you don't understand, Jesus. You don't understand the things I've done. And I said, I've done this, and I've done this, and, I, and I've done this. I started to get deep into the darkness that I lived in. And Jesus said to me, I love you. And I was shocked. One, that I was hearing God so clearly, but that I would, I would be confessing my sins and I was hearing this voice of how much forgiveness that he had for me. And then he, he, he closed it off with how much he loved me. And I thought, well, when people say they love you, they want you to say that you love them back. And I said, I love you too, Jesus. And he said, well, no, you don't. Now you only know me, but one day you will. You see, the scriptures say, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, I had lived life in fear of being in trouble, of being treated, you know, severely and harshly. Yet at my worst, Christ still loved me. You see, I would always be ignored if I'd done something wrong. I would always feel rejection. I paid a severe price for the sins that I'd committed in my living. And I was worthy of punishment. I was worthy of condemnation. But when Christ came into my life, he told me he loved me. And the same is for you. No matter where you are today, 
that when we were still sinners, when you were at your worst, Christ died on the cross for you because he loved you. You know, John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says this, For God so loved, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believed in him would not perish, but receive eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. You see, we know these scriptures and we need to allow these scriptures to penetrate our heart so that we can live a full life in him. It says, God so loved the world. He did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but to save the world. You see, Jesus loves you so much. And God the Father, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, loves you so much that he was willing to send his only son to die on the cross for you. You know, Jesus came to earth, lived in the flesh. He, he was good in all that he did. The Bible says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. It's because of the love that Jesus has for the people. And he went about healing all people. He was casting demons out of people. He was setting them free. He was healing, um, feeding them, taking care of them, and giving them hope. There was all good in what Jesus was doing. But he was arrested by religious people that had no love in their hearts. They believed they said that they had a faith in God, yet their hearts were so hard and they had lost love in their heart for one another. They didn't understand that Jesus was God's very own son who had come to set the people free. And in their hardness and in their lack of love, they took Jesus. They arrested him. They beat him. They, they, they nailed him to a cross. And Jesus died the most painful and slowest death known to man. You see, Jesus being God, he could have stopped that punishment at any time. He could have called legions of angels to come to his assistance and to set him free. Yet because of his love for you, he went through with such punishment to remove any block that may be between you and a God of love. Jesus did it all on the cross because you could not do that for yourself. There's a severe punishment for sin. And only Jesus could take that upon his own body by the shedding of his own blood to redeem you back to almighty God. And this he did to demonstrate to you the love he has for you. John 15 verse 13 says, Greater love has none than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life for you, friend, that you could become a friend of God, a child of God, knowing him intimately and walking in his purposes. You know, a number of years ago, I was called to go to a country in Asia to share the, the gospel of Christ and um, a country filled with false idols and false gods and and going there, you would think that God would send me there with a word of rebuke to the people. Yet in preparing to go there, he didn't give me any message, any sermon. Until one day, a, a week or so before I'd left, I was reading a, young, a Bible story to my young daughter. And the Lord said to me quite clearly, he says, when you go, all I want you to do is tell the people I love them, that I care for them, and I'm bringing them out of bondage. And that's what I did. You see, the first night of the crusade that I was there for, the conference, I could hear the preachers go before me. They were so angry, yelling and screaming at the people like they were telling them off. And the people sat there like, and like they were stunned. They were just sitting there like under, still under oppression. And then I took the platform and I, I looked at these beautiful people and I started to share to them, this is what God has sent me to tell you, that he loves you, that he cares for you and he's bringing you out of bondage. And the, the faces of these people started to change. Their countenance started to change. And the Holy Spirit was working in their hearts, bringing hope and life into their lives. 
hope and life and light that they had never experienced before. They had only known oppression, and darkness and hurt. And when I asked those who wanted to respond and to give their lives to Jesus, hundreds of people responded and gave their life to Christ. And he, Jesus continued to bring healing to them and heal them physically, mentally. You see, today's message is very simple, church. God loves you and he cares for you. And no matter where you are today, no matter how you feel, no matter how weak or no matter how, how strong you may be feeling, no matter how much faith you may feel like you have today, and no matter how many mistakes you've made, God loves you regardless. God cares for you regardless. Even when you're at your worst, God still loves you. You know, I, I, I've shared about the love of God displayed through Jesus Christ on the cross. And, but now I just want to share a little bit of what the scriptures say about what love actually is. Because we know God so loved the world that he sent his only son to die for you. But if, if God is a God of love, then we need to know what the love is. And it says that in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, it says that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and love never fails. Now you see, God is love. So all these things I represent you are his heart and his character. He is patient with you. He is kind towards you. He keeps, when you repent and confess your sins to them, he keeps no record of wrongs, and he is always giving you hope, and he, his love will never fail you. Psalm 103 verse 8 says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. This is an amazing, mighty God that we serve. The same creator of heaven and earth, of all the planets, people, animal, everything in the ocean and the ocean itself. This God, Jesus Christ, has nothing but love for you patience, kindness to you. You know, many times in my journey, I've made mistakes and I'm thankful for the love that God has towards me, regardless of my performance. Psalm 103 verse 2 to 4 says this, Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. See, when you're feeling unworthy today, if you're feeling ashamed today, if you feel like you've done too much wrong, you need to know that God loves you. He still loves you and he will always love you. You know, the love that God has for us compels him towards us and his mercy and his grace comes to us. His heart turns to us in our despair and he will always show us mercy if we're turning to him. You know, we are living in very dark days in the world today and the return of Jesus is near. And Jesus said in the last days, There'll be wars and rumors of wars. He said nation will fight against nation and kingdom will rise up against kingdoms. He said there'll be famines and pestilences and earthquakes. And he said that people will betray one another. And the scriptures say that the increase of wickedness, there'll be an increase of wickedness because the love of most and the love of most will grow cold you see there is dark times around us we're in dark times we're in last days and all these things are taking place there is so much hatred in the world today 
There are wars all the time, pestilences, there's pandemics. We're living through a time of COVID. And the love of many has grown cold in these days. But amongst such severe trouble and severe suffering, regardless and amongst the hardness of hearts that's in the world, the love of God will remain on all who have given their life to Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what's going on in these last days. You need to be assured of something today, that the love of God will never depart from you in Christ Jesus. And again, the scriptures tell us so. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine a nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus, Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from your love when you're in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what hard time you're going through today. I mean, it matters to God, of course. But, but what you are going through today does not separate you from his love. The wars, the rumors of wars, the hardness of the people's hearts around you, the persecution that you may be facing, the hardships that you may be facing today. Sickness cannot separate you from the love that God has for you. Again, he loves you so much that he sent Jesus to show you his love and to bring you into relationship with him. Now, and just to close up this message, I need to need to be clear and I need to give a full perspective on some, some things. We need to know his love today and we need to stand firm on his love today. And the love of God will always be available for everyone who calls on his name. But I, to be completely honest with you, for those who deny Christ, a day is coming when they will pay a severe price. You see, today there is love. Today there is forgiveness. Today there is mercy and grace available in him. He's paid the price for you. Yet one day, for those who deny to receive the mercy and grace and the love of God, there will be a day of, of great judgment. There will be a day of where people will end up in eternal punishment, eternal suffering. So we need to know and we need to turn to Jesus today while we can so we can receive the love and healing that comes through Christ. People are separated from the love of God. People are separated from God through sin, through darkness. Yet God so loved the world. Again, you need to know the heart of God for you today. He so loved you that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the true and living God, to die on the cross for you. That if you believe in him, you will never have to suffer eternal punishment. But you will receive eternal life in him. That all condemnation will be taken off your life. Because the scriptures say, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I just want to give you this opportunity, if you have not known the love of God, if you want to know the love of God, then to open up your heart to him and allow him to come and minister to your heart today. Call on the mighty name of Jesus while you still can and find healing for your soul and healing for your mind and allow the love that I experienced and that I encountered when I gave my life to Jesus. And as I confess my wrongs to him, his reply was, I forgive you. As I confess my wrongs to him, he said, I love you. Even when I said, when he knew that I did not love him back. You see, the love God has for you is not based on your love for him. He loves you regardless. But it's up to you to receive that love today and his mercy. And if you want to receive Jesus today as you watch this broadcast, I just ask that you just, you just call out to Jesus 
and say, Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and that God raised you from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask that you wash me in your precious blood. Forgive me of my sin. And I ask you to lead my life forward and be my Lord forever. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Now God loves you church. Again, it's been a blessing to share this word with you, just a brief word. And then I'd encourage you to get hold of a Bible and to read it for yourself. Pray, seek God for yourself. Ask him to reveal himself to you. Ask him to, 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 to impart his love deep into your life. And that when you receive the love of God, you will see that your love for others will grow as well. And I'll just encourage you going forward that you know, we have received the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of, of, of the kingdom, the spirit of love himself. We have no longer walking in the spirit of the world, the natural world, the natural man. And the Lord says in the scriptures, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Know today through the love of God, he's imparted love, a spirit of love into your heart. And you no longer need to walk in fear of these days. You no longer need to walk in trouble in your own mind because God has given you love and he has given you power and he has promised you peace. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that God will lead you well and that you, he, that you will know his goodness today. God bless you.